Today we are going to discuss ring spinning. The first thing what we would like to know about ring spinning is what is its function, what is the constructional features of the machine and its working principle. So, function of ring spinning is to attenuate the roving to the required fineness of yarn. That means, we feed the roving that we have prepared on speed frame and now roving becomes the input to the ring spinning machine and we produce a yarn of a fineness whatever we need. The other thing is to impart the twist. The yarn must have some strength and therefore, what we need is to insert twist into it. So, that is also another function of this machine and the third thing is once the twist has been inserted, it has to be wound and we have to make a package and therefore, winding the yarn to form a suitable package is also the function of ring spinning. So, ring spinning we can say has three different functions, attenuation of roving, twist insertion and winding to make a suitable package. Now, here a machine configuration is shown. On the right hand side, a constructional view of the machine is shown and the block diagram gives you the various section of the machines. The first section is the creel, creel for roving bobbin. And you see if you on the right hand side the creel is shown where the roving bobbins are hanging. Then the next section in the machine is the drafting unit where we have to attenuate the roving. The third is the twisting unit. After drafting we have to twist otherwise the drafted material will have no strength. So, twisting unit is there and that is followed by an unit where we form the package or we make the package. In the machine this twisting and package formation or packaging you can say are happening simultaneously. So, there within another rectangular box it basically means that these two operations take place simultaneously, twisting and winding takes place simultaneously. As we go through the course, we will know how twisting and winding or packaging is happening together. If you after the creel, if you see that from each bobbin the roving is brought down and the roving enters the drafting unit consisting of three pair of rollers and also aprons. Then it passes through a guide that is what is known as lapid guide and for the lapid guide the yarn goes to a ring and traveler combination which is not very clear in this diagram, but as you go through the course you will see what is ring and what is traveler, but it passes through the ring and traveler and from there it goes to the bobbin. <coughs> so, feed material is roving, the output material is yarn on bobbin which we call cop. The number of roving bobbins that the creel can accommodate can go up to almost 2000. So, we have on this machine 2000 spindle that means 2000 production positions and the machine works on both sides. So, if there are suppose 1980 spindles that means half of it will be on one side and another half will be on the other side. 
the roving hang that it can process can vary between 200 to 1200 texts. The drop that machine can give is to the order of 12 to 45, 45 usually. That is the range of drop that we generally keep it on the machine. The yarn count that we can spin has a very, very wide range. That is, it starts from 5, it can go up to 100 takes. So, that is the range of yarn count that the machine can produce. The bobbin weight or the weight of the cup can vary between 50 to 140 gram. So, we produce a package where the yarn content is to the order of 50 to 140 gram. The spindle speed is to the order of almost 25,000 at the maximum, but usually the commercial speed is around 22,000, 23,000 or 18,000 all depends upon the count of yarn that we are going to process. It is not that the speed is fixed and suitable for all counts of yarn. Now, we will go the kind of operations which are involved here. The first operation is the krilling of the roving bobbin. So, the krill that you have seen which is supposed to accommodate the roving bobbin that is the feed material. So, we have to fill that krill with roving bobbin. So, that is the first operation on the machine. The second operation is threading of roving to the drafting unit. We have to remove the roving from the roving bobbin and then pull it down and then feed it to the drafting unit because there the drafting is unit is going to pull out the roving and draft it. Then comes the operation in drafting by this machine. Twisting is another operation, winding is another operation because finally I have to wind the yarn around the package. Then doffing of the full bobbin, once the bobbin is full then we need to doff it. That is we have to remove the full package and we have to replace it by an empty bobbin or empty corpse. So, these are the various operations which are involved. Next, let us go into details of the working principle. As I said, rovings are all hanging from the krill as you can see in the diagram. Then the roving end is pulled down from the bobbin and they are fed to the drafting unit. The drafting rollers are actually pulling the roving continuously. So, there is no other device which will unwind the roving. It is the pull exerted by the back pair of drafting rollers which is causing the roving to slide down from the roving bobbin and it is continuously reaching the drafting unit. The drafting unit consists of roller and aprons and attunes the roving to the required fineness. So, the part of the drafting unit is to further stretch it and you will see, we will discuss in more details that this drafting unit is a basically 3 over 3 roller drafting units where aprons are there to guide the fibers in the front zone of the drafting unit. So, the purpose is basically to stretch and the stretch is maximum on this machine. If you remember the amount of drop that we keep which is around 6 to 8 on draw frame, speed frame around 10 to 12, but on ink spinning it goes to the order of up to, it can go up to 45. So, generally it varies between 20 to 30 in that range. The drafted fleece emerging from the front roller nib is twisted by the rotating traveler. So, if I want to twist the fleece which is moving out from the front rollers, we have to rotate the yarn around its own axis. 
and that is being performed by a traveler and ring combination as shown in this particular slide. You see that the blue colored circle is representing a ring. And the tiny traveler is also shown like a C shaped small ring as it is shown here, it is black in color. So, travelers are placed on the ring and receives its motion from the pull of the thread passing in between the traveler and the bobbin mounted on the spindle. That is the bobbin, empty bobbins are first mounted on a vertical spindle and the spindle gets its drive from some other source. So, spindle and the bobbin they becomes integral part. When the spindle rotates, the bobbin also rotates. And the way the yarn is threaded, if you look at this the yarn path, the yarn is as it moves out of the front roller nip, passes through the lappet and then it bulges out. The bulging out is because of the rotation of the yarn loop around the axis of the bobbin. Therefore, we show it as a curved path. It is only because when the traveler turns at a high speed, the element of yarn between the traveler and the spinning lappet that you see it here between these the loop continuously rotates around the vertical axis of the bobbin and it bulges out and looks like a balloon. So, the path is going like this, it is passing through the traveler and reaching the surface of the bobbin. That is how the yarn is threaded and therefore, as the bobbin rotates like in this direction, the loop of yarn between the traveler and the ring will also be pulled and it is this pull which will cause the traveler to rotate on the ring. So, the traveler is getting its motion from the spindle because traveler and the spindle is connected by a thread and that is the yarn that you are spinning that itself acts as this, this particular thread. Spindle and traveler's speed difference causes winding. Now, what happens? The traveler lags behind the spindle. The speed of the spindle or speed of the bobbin basically meaning same because bobbin is mounted on the spindle. So, bobbin speed and the traveler speed are not exactly same. What happens? the traveler lags. Why does it lag? Because it lags behind the spindle due to friction on the ring surface and continuous delivery of yarn. Both of them need to be satisfied. Then only the traveler will lag behind the bobbin or behind the spindle. Because of this lag, the yarn is going to be wound around the bobbin. So, that is the how the, uh, the winding takes place. The, we will do the force analysis of on the yarn in some other lecture, but here we are showing that the yarn element A B, this is the see this bigger circle here is representing the ring. And the smaller circle is representing the bobbin. Between them, the A B is basically the yarn element. So, the, as the A B is pulled because of the rotation of the bobbin, the tension in the yarn can be resolved into two as shown a tangential part F T and a part radially acting, which is called F N and it is the F T part which is actually continuously pulling the traveler along the track of the ring. 
So, this tension which is F w is resolved into two components F t and F n and F t component is actually acting tangentially of the traveler and always pushing the traveler and hence the traveler keeps on rotating around the ring and that is why the winding takes place. So, both of them turns. So, the this is the direction this is also rotating, this is also rotating. The traveler here also is rotating, the ring is stationary and there is a difference in speed. We will discuss them in more details in the coming lectures. Besides this, what is further going to happen is that the ring rail on which the traveler sits, it traverses up and down to distribute the yarn on the bobbin surface in the form of layers of short length. So, this is what is shown in this diagram. If you look at the diagram at the bottom, you see that the green part is showing the various layers of the yarn that we are producing since the ring rail keeps on moving up and down. See, you have to fill up the entire bobbin surface and therefore, if the ring rail remains stationary and does not move, all the yarn will go on on the same place and that place whatever is the small region over which the yarn is going to be wound that will be gradually become very large in diameter and it will quickly get filled up and it will touch the ring. So, that is what we do not want. What we want that the yarn that being formed and we are trying to wind that yarn should be distributed over the entire length of the bobbin. So, the typical length of the bobbin is shown here in this diagram by the red tube that you see here that is actually a plastic bobbin. So, from bottom to top it needs to be filled up. And if we want to do this, the ring rail has to move up from bottom to top and then it has to move down from top to bottom. That is how we can only fill it up. But the way we do it here that the ring rail will move over short length first. Why do you do it? That we will discuss in some other lecture. So, the layers of short length are basically first produced. Layers of short length as shown at the bottom of this diagram in this slide. Then successive short layers overlap on each other to fill up the bobbin surface. Gradually the short lengths are being laid on top of each other and the bobbin diameter is going to grow and gradually the surface is going to be filled up. But then the short traverse length is not equal to the total length of the bobbin. So, what we do at the starting point of the ring rail upward journey shifts upwards after each cycle to fill up the entire bobbin surface. So, the ring rail keeps on moving in short strokes. It moves in short strokes from bottom to some, some part of the bobbin, but it is not going to the tip of the bobbin. And then it comes back again to the bottom, again moves up, again comes back. So, it is moving in short strokes. Now, the starting point of the short stroke is continuously shifted upwards and gradually the entire bobbin surface gets filled up. Now, you may wonder ki what is this, why are you doing like this? Why not we are starting from the bottom and going to the top of the bobbin as we have done it in the case of roving package or roving bobbin building. So, that particular principle we do not follow it here. Why do not you follow it? We will discuss as you go through the course and you will understand that.
with this we close the very initial part of the ring spinning. Thank you.